Christ, this be back in the house of the Lord today. Uh, my prayer to God is that I might be a blessing that. today to everybody here, and uh, so we might all be drawn closer to the Lord. We want to turn our Bibles to the book of Galatians in the fifth chapter before we start. Verse 1. <clears throat> the Bible reads, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, for with Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. That's right. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Right. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Mm -hmm. You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Amen. So this is our reading this morning, and we see several things in, in this that uh, we would like to talk about. And, and of course, we mentioned here uh, reading this circumcision. And over in uh, Genesis, what uh, the Lord spoke uh, to them, uh, Abraham, and uh, he made a promise to them. And he said, I'll give you, I'll, I'll see to it that you get all the land of Canaan mm -hmm. where the milk and honey flows. But you need, you will have to have all of your males circumcised. Now this was like I spoke of a couple, three, four weeks ago about a token. This is another token that God has gave to mankind. Now the, the so many people works this circumcision up and has it to do with, with uh, salvation. But we was reading here this morning uh, when Paul said, Behold I Paul in verse two, say that you that if you're circumcised Christ probably nothing. Right. So this morning we we see that the promise was made to Abraham and it's still in effect. Amen. Uh, because uh, Israel is still uh, over there and they've got the country. But the thing of it is they I don't know I don't I don't know how to explain. I've not read uh, read uh, or studied on the way that they uh, how they study, but I know they use the, still use the law. Well, we know this morning that uh, the law does not profit them nothing, and so uh, uh, they're 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 blinded. And Amen. I know I know that uh, the Bible tells us that one day the Lord will, when He comes back, He'll go back to the to the Jew and He'll open our eyes. And there will be a nation established in one day of believers. So this is this is some of the things. But he in verse one here, he said, "Stand fast," and that means this morning retain spiritual freedom. Amen. And so that's what we need to do this morning is retain spiritual freedom. We need to we need to understand that we're not we're not free from the law, but we're not. Saved by the law, Amen. and here uh, this is what Paul was had run into here with the uh, Galatians here, and so uh, starting in verse one again, he says, "Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where uh, Christ has made you has made us free," and that's talking about the law. He's made us free from the law, and he he come himself. Jesus Christ came himself. And he kept the law, and he kept it, and didn't didn't go a shot or a little out of the law. 
Amen. And then he made the sacrifice on the cross for us, and that eliminates us from having to keep the, the law. And, it, and of course, the law never did save, but we see of Abraham, he, by faith, Abraham. And so by faith, we're saved. Amen. And, and, and it's not works, it's not anything like that. So we need to remember these things when when we're thinking about how other countries are, are living and, and knowing that so many of them are uh, in bad shape. Uh, right. I, I'm not putting no uh, uh, judgment on them, but the thing of it is they're in bad shape because they don't know the truth as we see it. So here he says here, Christ hath made us free from the law and be not entangled again with the yoke of, uh, yoke of bondage. Now, this uh, yoke that we're reading about this morning, uh, it's, I've heard, uh, I've heard stories about these oxen and the yokes and all this. And uh, in, the, in our uh, Acts, I believe it's 715, it speaks of his stiff neck, and that was uh, Stephen's, he stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart. Right. Now, this, this bondage or this, this yoke that is put on these, was put on these oxen, and that's why the Jesus used the oxen uh, and, the, and the yoke, because he knew everybody was familiar with this situation. And when they, when you put this uh, this uh, yoke on the necks of them, they will bend their necks like this, for that you can get them on. But one that is not trained will throw his head back and do everything in the world. And so the the, the owner has to do something, punish the oxen or, or whatever, to get him to bring his neck down. And so. That's the reason why that a good oxen that's trained right and then taught right will bow his head down and let the yoke go on him and right. the will fix under it. And and so it's a, it's that it's that way with so many of the people today. And and Stephen said you still connect. They won't bow. They won't listen. They right. won't hear. And he said you still connect and uncircumcised. Uh, in heart. And of course, again, here we see the word circumcised in heart. Well, uh, the heart has to be pricked uh, but before it can be uh, uh, open and understand that Jesus Christ died for our sins and not no man had done anything. And, and back to these oxen, uh, we see that they are uh, a very strong uh, animal mm -hmm. and people used to use them a lot to pull heavy loads and uh, and and I've, I've, I've heard my grandpa say that when an ox got to pulling the harder he pulled the lower he got to the ground mm -hmm. than his knees and <laughs> that's just a picture this morning of us Amen. as we get heavy burden with a load that we can't handle, we can't do nothing with, we have to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask his forgiveness. Amen. And that's, that's a beautiful picture this morning, people. Of, uh, if we could even see a team of oxen out here, how they mourned and how they bowed and they, how the lower they got, the more they pulled. And that's, that's that typifying a Christian this morning. Amen. He's, He's, he's in the same way. He, the, the, the more he's persecuted, the more humbler he gets and the more lower he gets. And so th this, is a, this is a beautiful story. But now listen here. Uh, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Amen. And this, this morning, is what they're practicing. Uh, the Jews practice this. And I'm assuming that they think that is, well, if they, they're keeping their law, keeping the law of Moses and what God had, had told uh, Abraham to do. But listen, they don't understand that Jesus Christ has come 
and has made an atonement for our sins. Amen. And that we are free from the law as far as obeying it for salvation because we do not have to uh, be baptized and you, and, you, and you get this involved with religion just like circumcision you get baptism and, and baptism is nothing this morning but a show to the world that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and the, the, the uh, circumcision is just a show that God made you and made them a promise that they would inherit this land. But that's as far as, as it goes, as far as their souls being saved. So he said uh, unto uh, uh, Paul, I, I Paul uh, behold, in verse 2, Behold, I Paul say unto you, If you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Right. And we know this morning the reason that Jesus Christ came to this earth and, 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 and proclaimed God as his father, that the law could not be kept by a mortal human being. Right. Because it was too much involved in it and, and it, it, it was just, it was right down to the the, the raw, the raw meat, and, and they, they, they could not keep it. Right. And so Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for us. And this is why I, Paul said, I testify to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. And there's no way this morning that you can be a debtor because it says you're obligated to do that. Right. And so if you if you can't do it then one little thing and you're out of it. And so back in the old days, they would go and make an atonement of blood, uh, uh, kill a, uh, a bird or an animal of some kind and make a blood atonement. But it did not, uh, it did not save them. All it did was it rolled back that sin until Jesus Christ could come and he could take care of these people that had used this blood atonement for right. their salvation. And, and one place in the Bible there reads for the, that he ascended into the, into the depth of the earth. And of course it was the barrel, but he, and he led captivity captive. Amen. And so this morning, that's how that they got by this without uh, uh, going to hell. But now he says, uh, the, in verse 3, for I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Now, let me read that. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Right. And people will run backwards and everything else and say, oh no, you can't fall from grace. But yet they'll say, I'm perfect and I live above sin. And so the thing of it is, he's not talking about a saved person being uh, falling from grace. Right. He, he's not even he's not even coming close to that. But these people here are believing in circumcision and, and they're not never had to, uh, the grace applied. Mm -hmm. So now we see here in verse five, for we through the spirit wait for the righteousness of faith. And we are wait, they, they were, they're waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to come back again, for we through the Spirit wait. And then in verse 6, for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Amen. So here Paul is talking to them in the next, ver in the next uh, verse there. And so he said, you did run well. Mm -hmm. And so some of those, some of those had already uh, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. But he said, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? And so these people uh, maybe had not accepted the Lord Christ, Jesus Christ, but they, they, they have heard the truth 
and they rejected it or they didn't follow it. So that put them in the same shape with the, uh, the ones that was using circumcision. This, in verse 8 then, this persuasion cometh not of him that called you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Amen. And so we see here this morning when, when they say that you could keep the law, so you see this, a little leavening, leavening is the whole lump. If you have one little, one little sin, the whole lump is, is uh, uh, leavened. Mm -hmm. And so in uh, verse 10, I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And so Amen. they had people down there that would come down there preaching circumcision, works and all these things to them. And, uh, and, and Paul just said here, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And again, it's a warning to us and to everybody else in this this warning uh, that, that if we... Uh, try to tell someone uh, about Jesus Christ and we kind of lean to them a little bit in order to say we'll pull them into the church. Listen, we're wrong. Amen. We need to keep our mouth shut when, that, when, when, when we think about doing that. And if we, if we try to testify to somebody and tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to uh, tell them the truth. And if they won't listen, Dust off, dust off your feet, and, and go to another one. He matters. That's what the Lord says to do. Now He says uh, uh, in verse twelve, I believe it is, "I would they were even cut off, which trouble you." Now uh, the the thing here is, Paul is saying, "Hey, I, I wish that they wouldn't trouble you, because uh, I'm trying to tell you the truth." And they're coming in here and, and going behind my back and telling you all this other stuff. And, you know, that's that's a, a thing you think about. You, you're trying to witness to the to people and tell them about their souls and how that they can be saved and the danger of being lost and all this. And somebody else coming in and saying, oh, no, he's lying to you. You just need to be baptized and you'll be all right. Well, people, that's, that's, that's the thing where Paul says here, he says, I would, they were even cut off, which troubling you. Amen. For brethren, we have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Amen. But by love serve one another. And so this uh, uh, occasion, uh, he's, he's, uh, it's an occasion to the flesh or a uh, a way of using the flesh in verse 14 for all the law is fulfilled in one word even the in this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself Amen. and so this morning when we try to be a, a help to someone uh any anyone that uh can be our neighbor but uh we need to we need to try to be a help to them and, and, and thou shalt love that neighbor as yourself. In other words, you wouldn't want to tell them something that's wrong and believe it yourself. And so uh, this, is, this is the thing that Paul was warning them about. But he says in verse 15, But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one with another. And, so, uh, and that's really a, a thing in church, uh, you know. Uh, troubles arise in church. Listen, that they, they don't need to be hammered out and, and beaten, and banged on. Because listen, that's what the devil wants. Right. If he can get, if he can drop that little little thing in the church and get everybody yow yow and cross the aisles and this way and that way, he's pleased, mm -hmm. and uh, he can he can cause a lot of trouble. And so remember, you know. When if you you know the thing of it is we're 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 just sitting on a mountain and we're 
got everybody's, I mean, it's, it, we're looking at, they're looking at us. And we got a lot of things to, we got a lot of things to contend with, and we got a lot of things to prove mm -hmm. to the world. And so be careful, be careful and uh, and how you listen to other people uh, tell you how that old church down there don't do this and don't do that. So this is it. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one another. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that you would. Amen. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. How now the works of the flesh are manifested or evidence that which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, or sins, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, and it says heresy and all this. And he says envying, murdering, drunkenness, reviling, and such things which I tell you before, as I have told also told you in time past that. They which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And so Amen. This, this could be a, a, a lesson, uh, a lesson that would last uh, uh, no telling how long. If a person do a lot of studying on these uh, different kinds of uh, murder and envy and all these things, uh, we we see it all the time. And right. We, we have to be very very careful if we don't. It's going to rub off on us. Mm -hmm. So here, but the spirit, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So if you can do, if you can do these, keep these things in mind when you with joy and peace and temperance against such there is no law. We we need to, we need to have that in our hearts and do these things when we witness to someone or when we're out here in daily life and we see this going on and we see that going on keep our mouth shut about judging that person or uh, what he's doing because listen uh, when you judge you're taking God's place and uh, you, it's, it makes you guilty just as bad as it does him so uh, uh, these are some of the things that you can remember about this and they, in verse 24, will we'll close. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desired of vain glory, desires providing one another envy with one. Amen. Uh, so one another envying one another. So this is our lesson this morning, and I hope that something here will encourage you to go through some of the Bible and, and start studying some on it. Amen. And uh, it'll draw you a little bit closer. And if, if, it's, if it's been a blessing, I'm thankful. And, uh, I'm thankful that the Lord give me the strength and all to come up here and, and say what I did. Of course, Amen. I know it, it ain't been like the Lord getting up there preaching, but listen, I'll read the Bible to you and it's God's work. Thank you Amen. so much. Amen.